My beloved sister, the great northward voyage is at a standstill. We are lodged in the ice, and the men are surly. I fear a mutiny. <coughs> to compound the difficulties, we are besieged. A man-like creature holds the crew in the grip of terror. It has killed many of our dogs and eludes every attempt to capture or kill it. Frankenstein! Merchants of heaven! What is that thing? Did we even hit it? It's the devil! Come to punish us for our sins! That'll do, sailor. But it don't even feel the cold. How can that be? It just sits there on the ice and lets the wind blow right through it. Frankenstein! Mr. Elton, perhaps you had better bring our guest up on deck. I think that he's still unconscious, Captain. Then you'd better rouse him, hadn't you? Here is the key to the liquor chest in my cabin. Pour a little brandy down his throat and see if you can get him on his feet. And Elvin. Sir! Mind I don't smell any of that brandy on your breath when you come back up. Bye, sir! He's scared. Uh, the whole group is, Robert. We can't keep them below deck forever. Best place for them is out of the cold until we can break free from this ice flow. With respect, sir. That part of the problem. I am aware of that. They blame you, Captain. They say it's your foolish pride trying to reach the pole. I like said I know, Sai. They're getting crazy all jammed together like this. Elden ain't the first to talk of money. I don't blame them. What do we do? What can we do? We question our guest and we wait. What? Do you think you could out there, sir? I wish that I knew. Do you think maybe the men could be right? What? That it's the devil. The men are right. That's exactly what it is. And who do I have the pleasure of addressing? My name is Victor Frankenstein. And you are? My name is Captain Robert Walsh. And this is my first mate, Cyprian Marsh. What are you doing in this waste? Herr Frankenstein. Hunting or being hunted, it depends on the day. Ha! You don't look like a hunter to me. With respect, Herr Frankenstein, Mr. Marsh is right. When we found you, all but one of your dogs had been killed, and you were all but dead. Kinder to have let me die. You can't mean that! Leave me. The only thing I have left to live for is to undo the wrong I've done. Beyond that, death is all I have to look forward to. That day. On the ice. That's what you hunt, isn't it? You've seen it? What is it, Herr Frankenstein? That, Captain, is the sum total of my sins come to call me to judgment. God and all the saints preserve us! Amen. And what's that supposed to mean, eh? Calm down, Mr. Marsh. <laughs> Mr. Frankenstein, I think that you had better explain yourself. It would take more time than you can afford. <laughs> Until we break free from this ice flow, Time is the only thing we have. Start slow. Where are you from? I was born in Geneva where my father was a doctor. You may have heard of my parents, Alphonse and Caroline Frankenstein. <coughs> no, I can't say that I have. Life was good there. I had a fiance named Elizabeth who was a ward of my parents since I was five. I had just returned from the University of Ingolstadt, where my boyhood friend Henry Clerval and I had gone to study natural philosophy. It started in Ingolstadt with two professors named Krimp and Waldman. Frankenstein! For those of you who continue to revere and quote the works of alchemists and sorcerers, you will find the rest of your stay here very difficult indeed. In these classes, we study the natural sciences and chemistry, and there is no place in modern thought for that ancient lunacy. How can he call those works lunacy? Quiet, Victor. Mr. Frankenstein. I warned you. Professor Cripp. I have had enough of your insolence disturbing my lecture. Surely, Professor. I have told you from your first day at this institution that there is no room here for that outlandish and antiquated rubbish you are so fond and of. And I have maintained from my first day here that you cannot categorize the works of Cornelius Agrippa as rubbish. Oh, can't I? Or Parcells. A fraud! Albertus Magnus? I'm warning you, young man. 
Your ability to continue your studies here is being greatly threatened by your childish devotion to these heretical and vile studies. It's your teaching that's rubbish. Victor, hold your tongue. You should listen to your friend, Frankenstein. I apologize, Professor. But no but about it, sir. I understand your father will be here shortly. Perhaps it is time he and I had a talk about your future. <laughs> Professor, I beg you not to take Victor too seriously. Gentlemen, serious. take a long look at Herr Frankenstein. You may not be seeing him again. Class dismissed. And Herr Clerval? Sir. You may want to choose your friends a little more wisely. Oh, do that, you rat-faced little freak. Why do you defer to him? Because I want to study medicine one day, become obscenely wealthy. Why do you let him get to you? Because he's wrong. Wrong or not, you need to go. Your parents are waiting. You're right. When will you meet us? Mm, tonight, for dinner. Justine will be there. That's the reason I'm coming. Did you think I wanted to spend dinner with you? What's going on with me as a dinner companion? <laughs> the reason I eat a meatball sandwich is because I've seen you eat one, and I eat it way much better. <laughs> now go! I'm going. I'll see you at dinner. Victor! Victor! Oh, you just missed him, Herr Frankenstein. <coughs> Blast, come on, we can catch him. You go, darling. You ladies need a rest. I, for one, don't feel a bit well. Coming, Henry? I think I'll just say hello to your charming ladies. Will you? Let's go, Papa. Let's go. Hello, Mama. I told you enough time, but not your mother. Then stop feeding you. Elizabeth, you look prettier than ever. Hello, Henry. Christine, I hope you're well. Very well, thank you. Well, I'm just glad to have a moment to rest. Oh, here, sit down. Thank you. What is this place? It's a lecture hall for natural philosophy. Charming. I'm afraid not. Uh, how long will you be in town? Three weeks. When we're in Ingolstadt, we must see about the wedding fabric for this wedding dress. Oh, honestly, Justine, wipe that frown off your face before it freezes there. I just don't want everything to change. How will things change? With Victor and Elizabeth getting married, everything will be different. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. You're right, Justine. Everything will be different. It'll be better. Well, we've always been together. You, me, Victor, and Henry. And now you'll be going away. Only two miles down the road. I suppose. I'll never love you all one jot less. Well, I should hope not. Oh, I've always loved you like a mother ever since Justine and I came to live with you all those years ago. And Alphonse is like a father to me. And I couldn't love little William anymore as if he were my own brother. And Victor? Do you love him like a brother too? Oh, no. Victor, I will always love differently. I know. Darling, don't be glum. You'll find someone someday and you'll be married. I hope so. I know so. And we'll all live together and we'll have a dozen babies each. Oh, I recommend that you start with one and then see how you feel about the other eleven. Well, yes. <laughs> this is the sort of conversation I enjoy. Oh, you poor Let's go see and see if we can find Father and Victor. Grant, you will give me some time to show you the campus that sucks my will to live. <laughs> oh, coming, Justine. No, I think we'll wait here. Be back before you know it. You shouldn't be alone. Honestly, you don't look a bit well. I'll be fine. Look who it is. Victor! Oh, Victor! I found you, Mother. Mother. Look at you. Scholarship suits you, darling. I'm so sorry I was late to meet you, but I only just received your letter that you were coming. I told him we only just arrived. How was the journey from Geneva? A little bit hard on your mother. She's been all the way here. Stop it, Alphonse. This is nothing, Victor. It's a little traveling sickness. I can't believe how much William has grown in a year. Victor? <laughs> Father says all you do is play with dead people. That's not what I said, William. Is it true, Victor? Do you look at dead people all day? Partly, William. I study a great many things, including human anatomy. What's that? It's looking at dead people. Fantastic! For goodness sake, William. Justine, will you take him back to the inn? Of course. Come along, William. Oh, Justine? Yes? You look lovely in blue. Don't think I didn't notice. Stop it, Victor. I'll tell Elizabeth you're a flirt. Come along, William. How would you like to get a toffee apple on the way to the inn? Really? Really, really. Really, Victor, you shouldn't encourage her. It's harmless. It isn't. She's been infatuated with you for years. You know that. I love Elizabeth. Justine knows that. Doesn't make her feelings any less sharp. <laughs> Henry will take that edge off her. He's had an eye on her since he was 16. That rascal. His father's so certain he'll fail out of university. Where is Elizabeth? Your letter said that she was coming with you. We found Henry early, and the two have been left off to find you. Get ready for a treat. I'm about to get another tongue lashing. What? Dr. Frankenstein. Professor Kreb? We must talk about your son. Professor, please. Don't interrupt me, young man! Are you aware of what your son reads and endorses? I am. And you approve? 
hardly that, but it's harmless. Harmless? It's rubbish at best and dangerous at worst. How can you say that when even members of your own faculty... Victor, stop this. Dr. Waldman. Doctor, may I please have a word with you? Yes, Waldman. Lend us the benefit of your experience here. Gentlemen, how may I be of service? Professor Crimp was just saying that the works of Agrippa have no place in modern learning. I have no opinion on the subject. Good day. But Professor... Victor! Unhand me, Mr. Frankenstein! I'm warning you, Frankenstein, this is the very last time I will tolerate this. Professor... The last time! Professor, this is hardly the time and place to be discussing this. Perhaps Victor and I can meet you in your office after study tomorrow. I won't stand for this in my class. Let us discuss it all tomorrow. Tomorrow, then. But I'm warning you, Dr. Frankenstein, your son is a danger. I can't believe Dr. Waldman would back down so. Believe it, Waldman was once very nearly dismissed from this university for teaching the exact same philosophy that lent you in such trouble. When was that? Please leave it, Victor. Now come, let's find Henry and Elizabeth and relax over lunch. I'm still feeling a bit weak. Give me a half an hour and I'll meet you at your end. There are one or two quick things I need to tie up here. All right, sweetheart, don't be long. What were you thinking, boy? Professor, please. I told you a thousand times not to include me in your petty little squabbles. What we do and say in the laboratory is a secret. Do you understand? But do you understand? Yes. Good. Tonight's your night. You found a brain? Quiet, you idiot. Yes. Another comic was hanging today. Then tonight, you and Fleur will meet me after sunset. There will be a night. Frankenstein! Captain! It's leaving! It'll be back. How do you know? Because I'm not dead yet. Mr. Eldon, could you please get Herr Frankenstein something to eat? You're joking! Some respect for the Captain Eldon. Why? We're freezing out here because of his insanity! We're starving to death in this ice trap! And he wants to give our food away! Reaching the pole is not insane! Someday your name will be beside mine in the history books when we succeed! If you succeed... I beg your pardon! If you succeed, but what happens if you fail? I will not fail. Dear God, you share my madness, don't you? Miss... Mr. Elvin, the captain gave you an order. We should just throw him to that beast and be done! That might be the kindest thing you could do. Was there lightning that night? What? In Ingolstadt, was there lightning? Oh, yes. Victor, Victor, over here, help me. Henry, for pity's sake, be careful. Where have you been? The storm's almost at its peak. My mother was taken ill. I was sitting with her and lost track of time. Woman's ready to kill. Not kill, Mr. Clerval. Create. Professor, I wanted to apologize. Not now, Mr. Frankenstein. Strap the subject down. Tonight, we shall make history. Tonight, the mysteries of life and death will no longer belong to God alone. Professor, that's blasphemy. Death is blasphemy. Sickness is blasphemy. I am merely undertaking what Adam began when he took the fruit. Tonight, a new life will come into being, but not mewling and helpless, stronger than man, more able to endure than man, born with memories intact and an ability to function with the mind of a criminal. And the body of several others. We can change all that, make him better. More perfect a man as man should have been. Quickly now, the storm is almost at its apex. Attach the wires to all key points and get ready. Victor, we can still turn back. Why? Young Frankenstein is right, Clerval. It's too late for moral timidity. Now we're committed to destiny. Quickly, on the count of five, I'm going to throw the switch. Be aware of any signs of life. If we prolong the charge, brain damage will result. Now five, four, 
Three, two, one. Oh. Professor! Oh. Power! Shut up the flow of power! Merciful heaven! Does it live? No. Rest, Professor. I'll get a doctor. No! No stranger enters this laboratory. But your injuries, you'll die. And I'll die! Frankenstein, the subject. Is it damaged? The basic form seems fine. But the brain is destroyed. You'll have a new one by dawn. How? <laughs> I won't live the night. You must take mine. Never! Frankenstein, give me your oath. I, I can't, Professor. Raw material, Victor, just raw material. I'm sorry, Professor. <coughs> My work dies with me. Victor, he's gone. He can't be. No breath, no pulse. It's over. Wait here, I'll go for a doctor. We'll be expelled! Henry, that is the finest mind in Switzerland, and I'm not just going to let it go! Victor! Justine! What are you doing here? I have a message from your father at the end. How did you find me? Please, you should read it now. It's urgent. Please, no. How long ago did he send this? Several hours ago. It took me a long time to find you. Victor, what is it? Come with me, Justine. Hurry! Dearest son, come at once. Your mother's condition worsens, and I fear that it is scarlet fever. She grows weaker, and I fear that she will not live the night. Oh, Victor, I'm sorry. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? <coughs> the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came down upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though imposts should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Elizabeth. Victor, thank goodness you've come. Where's father? Next door with William. How is she? Not well. She keeps slipping in and out of consciousness. If I had known it was this bad, I never would have left. The fever just kept getting worse after you left. We've been searching for you for hours. Mother, you're awake. I'm glad you came in time. In time for what, Mother? Don't try to be charming with me, Victor. I'm immune. You should rest, Mother, and get your strength back. My strength isn't coming back, Victor. You know that. Hush. Don't hush me. I'm still your mother. <coughs> Is Elizabeth still here? Right here. Ever since you came to live with us when you were five years old, it's been my fondest hope to see that you and Victor were married. But I will not be there to see it. Mother, don't talk like that. Stop it, Victor. You're wasting my time. Come and take Elizabeth's hand. All right. Now let me see you vow to each other that you will be married and that nothing will stop you. Victor, I promise that nothing will stop us from being wed. Of course we'll be married, Elizabeth. Nothing can stop us. Nothing. I'm still here. Call me mother once before I go to sleep. Get some rest now, mother. Oh, that's enough. Justine! Yes? You had better get father. Is she? Just get him! She's barely breathing. Professor Waldman died tonight. What? When? I was with him in the lab when it happened. I'm so sorry. Before he died, he said that death was a blasphemy. He was wrong, Victor. Death is just a part of living. No, Elizabeth, he was right. This is a blasphemy. And the loss of his fine mind is a blasphemy. That is not for you to decide. Isn't it? I had the power right in my hand. Tonight, it was right in the palm of my hand. What are you talking about, Victor? Is she still with us? Yes. Barely. Caroline? Caroline? The pulse is very weak. 
What's the matter with Mama? Come here, William. Papa? Kiss your mother goodbye. Is she going? Yes. She has to take a journey now, and she won't be coming back. Where is she going? Just kiss her goodbye. Goodbye, Mother. Take him out of Victor. What about Mother? She's gone, Victor. Now take your brother and the ladies out. <coughs> Blasphemy! Your mother and your mentor gone in a single day? In a single day. In a night. You poor fool. Why are you laughing? Because your captain shares my disease, but he doesn't yet understand what a nightmare really is. He may not, but I do! Is that so? A nightmare is what's out there on the ice! Mr. Eldon, I pray that you never find out how right you are. What is it? Haven't you guessed, Captain? It's that thing. It's that godforsaken abomination he stitched together from dead criminals. But it was destroyed by the electricity. Only the brain, Captain. Only the brain. Victor! Victor! I'm here, Henry. Victor, where have you been? Your family's sick with worry. Walden was right, Henry. He was right. He was wrong. His failure proved that. He was looking for something man was not supposed to have. My mother shouldn't have died, Henry. She shouldn't have. We have the power to end it all. Right here. Stop it, Victor! Your family needs you now. It's time to take your mother back to Geneva. No! It has to be now. Well, I still have the lightning. Well, it's still fresh. Let's do it and be done with it.
Because some unerring lodestone, perhaps some half-submerged memory in Waldman's brain, led him to Geneva. My home. But how did that thing learn to talk? You told us all it did was roar and slur. The creature himself told me that tale when I met him in Geneva. The road to find his maker was long, and some things, like walking and feeding himself, came naturally. Other memories would surface from time to time. Surely he encountered other people. Of course. Most shunned him or even beat him. There was a cholera epidemic that swept the region that year. I myself was nearly killed by it. The superstitious peasants thought that they had found the cause of my creation. Grandfather, I don't want to leave you alone. I'll be fine. Okay, there's been talk about a strange creature roaming the woods. Which is why you are going with your sister. Now hurry along and be back before the sun sets. I'll light the lantern for you. There's really no point. I just can't bear the thought of you sitting here alone in the dark. Shout if you need us. Here's a kiss for Grandma. Why, thank you. And here's a kiss for Agatha. You need to shave. Your whiskers tickle. Look after her, Felix. I will, Grandfather. Somebody there. You'll have to speak up. I can't see you. I I'm blind. Blind? Yes. Can I help you? Uh, uh, ah, you like the music. Well, I can't say I blame you. I'm partial to it myself. Do you play? Play? <coughs> yes. Your voice is odd. Do you not speak our language? I. I think I do. Think you do? I don't think I've ever talked to anyone before. Well, you're an odd one. Well, what's your name? No name. On the run, eh? Well, not to worry, my friend. I have no great love for the sheriff. Would you like to try to play? Play? 
Yes. Here, friend. Give me your hand. Friend? Oh, my. Here is a man who has suffered. May I? Friend. What did they do to you? What did they do? In the village, they beat me. Since then, I have been alone. Have you no friends? No family? There are some people. Why do you not go to them? Because they are too beautiful. And I am ugly. I am alone. Well, not to worry. Now you are safe. Are you hungry? There's some broth on the fire, and I have some cider and new bread. Bread? Yes, with honey. I would gladly share it with you. Why? Because I love God, who made us both. God did not make me. Uh, oh, I understand that you have suffered, but God has not forsaken you. Do not forsake him. <coughs> ah, that is beautiful. It's good to hear someone else play. Beautiful? There is a book here if you would like to read to me what we eat. It is called Paradise Lost. Can you read? Did I request the maker from my clay to mold me man? Did I solicit thee from thy darkness to promote me? <coughs> Is it too dim to read? Oh, forgive me. In my blindness, I forget that others have need of light. Uh, here, take the lantern. Heartbroken. 
fear for his health. I pray that this letter already finds you on your way, for you cannot arrive soon enough. Loving thoughts, yours truly, Elizabeth. When I arrived at home, before I could even see my father, he appeared to me out of the shadows. Henry, my things should be arriving within two days. Will you go to town and make arrangements? I think I'd better talk to my father alone. Of course, Victor. I love to your father, Elizabeth. Frankenstein! You! Yes, it is I. I pray that you were dead. I pray to die. You did this. I did. Why? Why destroy my brother? For hate's sake. Why did you create me? Because God should not control a monopoly on life and death. So here we stand, two deadly sins, wrath and pride. What I did, I did for all mankind. What you did, you did for Victor Frankenstein. Was it worth young William's life? We passed chemicals and electricity through his body to try again. You monster! God! God is true. That one of us here is a monster. But I wonder which one. <clears throat> Stop struggling. I don't want to kill you. Of course you do. Oh, no. Only you can do what I need to be done. What's that? I'm a creature capable of both master's love and bottomless rage. <clears throat> you will help me indulge in one, I will give vent to the other. How? Every creature is given a mate. You shall give me a mate. Never! I will never cross the unhallowed threshold again! You will. Give me my wedding night, or I'll be with you on yours. <laughs> I couldn't. Even if I wanted to, I would need my laboratory. Raw materials! I've heard that your laboratory will be arriving within two days. And I've already taken these liberties. <clears throat> Need. Raw materials. I couldn't. You must, for the sake of the one thing that will make peace with the entire race of man. Deny me, and you shall never know peace again. Very well. What did you say? I'll do it. I swear it. I swear I will do it. Again. I swear I will do it! Elizabeth. Thank goodness you've come. Justine has been killed. I know. I received your letter. How's father? Not well. He thinks he is dying, and he may be right, Victor. He may be right. He's so pale, and his heart is so weak. Now then, I'm home. We'll have him back on his feet in no time. I hope so. But, Victor, I think. What? Well, now is perhaps not the best time to suggest it, but it would mean so much to your father. I think we should get married right away. Right now? No, not tonight, but as soon as possible. You're right. Now is not the time to talk about it. You go in and let Father, I'm here, and I'll take care of the horses. All right, but you won't stop me long. I will have my way. Give me my wedding night, or I'll be with you on yours. <laughs> God forgive me. Captain! Yes? Frankenstein has fainted again. We've taken him down below. What should we do? Is he wrapped warm? <coughs> Aye. Then let him be. <coughs> Aye, sir. Come on, Elder. My beloved sister Margaret, I continue in this letter to the conclusion of the remarkable and tragic events of Victor Frankenstein as he related them to me. Poor Frankenstein was compelled to commit the ultimate sin a second time, this time against his will. This won't work, Victor! The storm isn't nearly powerful enough! It doesn't have to be. 
I've improved the process since then. I can now store the electricity in galvanic batteries to enhance the flow. You continued research on this? Not on the actual reanimation itself, but on the qualities of electricity, yes. <sighs> Only you can persuade me to this madness again. It's not madness! This time you'll see. She'll be perfect. Stop it, Victor! You know why we're doing this! I remember why we're doing this! It's not to change the world! It's to give you and Elizabeth your lives back! Don't worry, Henry. I haven't forgotten. But she will be perfect. Prepare the body. Victor, no! What's wrong? Not Justine! It's not Justine. It's raw material. I won't be part of this! But you knew. That we're building that creature of pride! But not this! Never this! We have no choice. I have a choice! Where are you going? To get Elizabeth and your father. Don't put an end to this! Stop. You have a task to finish. I have to reason with them! They will be here soon. Do you want them to meet me? No. Then finish. You must help. How? We must pull these switches at exactly the same time. Do you understand? Yes. When I reach one. Five, four, three, two, one, now! Stop now! She's perfect! You should never fail! Get away from her, she's mine! Henry was right, neither of you should have ever been! Get away, she's mine! Victor, yes! No! What have you done? Undid what never should have been. You deny me my bride, <laughs> I shall deny you yours! So, Margaret, strange circumstance has brought them here, at last, to where the earth ends. Captain? I. Frankenstein is dead. What? I said. Right over here. Surely goodness and mercy shall fall in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Who the blazes are you? I'm the miserable and the abandoned. An abomination to be kicked and trampled and spurned upon. You're him, aren't you? Yes, I'm him. What do you want here? I've come for the body of my father. Captain! Don't let him. No. It's what is right. Aye. What will you do now? I will take wood and fuel from your ship. To build a pile for the classic hero. And then with my father, I shall ascend the funeral plane triumphantly and exalt in the agonizing flames. <coughs> what end? To the only impossible, Captain. To undo what should have never been done. Captain? Why? The ice is broken. You should return home. And so, Margaret, with the freshening winds from the south, I am coming home. 